Hi, boys and girls. Welcome to another Faith Over Fear Bible lesson. We are so happy that you decided to join us once again. The previous lesson we did was about someone who I told you I thought was the mother of all times. Do you remember her name? Yes, her name was Mary, and she was the mother of Jesus. We chose to do this story because Mother's Day was soon approaching, and we thought that there was no better story to share with you than the story of Jesus' mother, Mary. I hope you were good to your mom on Mother's Day, and you let her know how much you loved and appreciated everything she has done and continues to do for you. I had a wonderful Mother's Day, and I am so thankful for my family and all of the love they showed me. I hope school is going good for you. Have you started counting down the days yet? Well, we have another great Bible story for you. When you think about a king, who can you compare him to in our country? Did you say the president of the United States? If you did, you are exactly right. Our lesson is about King Saul. He was Israel's first king. Being king was not all peaches and cream. King Saul had some hurdles to face. After our opening song and prayer, let's see what the journey was like for the king of Israel. Listen very carefully to the story because there will be some questions for you to answer after the video. <laughs> CHS High School and I'm affiliated with um, Mount Zion and I'm going to be praying today. So bow your heads and close your eyes. All right. 
dear Lord, I come to this church to, to, just to pray and to help help out with all these people today. I just pray that all these people in the church are feeling good today and that all these kids are learning things and how grades are good and having good thoughts and dreams. I also pray that that all the parents and adults are getting along and all their children are being cooperative and everything. And I just pray that God is with everyone. And he's praying for everyone and everybody's being thoughtful of everyone. In Jesus' name, I pray, amen. During the time of the prophet Samuel, Israel was a nation under the guidance of prophets and judges, ultimately ruled by God. Israel, however, wanted a king. Like all other nations, they wanted a man of their own choosing to rule them. Samuel was perplexed by this idea and knew this was a bad decision. The people of Israel demanded a king. As usual, Samuel prayed. God answered his prayer and told Samuel, Obey the voice of the people. They have rejected me from being king over them. Solemnly warn them and show them the ways of the king who shall reign over them. He told the people, You'll be disappointed in the king. He will tax you, take land and crops from you, and work you harder than you thought possible. The people were persistent. In the tribe of Benjamin, there lived a young man named Saul. He was taller and better looking than anyone else in the whole nation. This was the kind of king that the Israelites wanted. Samuel anointed Saul as the king of Israel. In a grand coronation ceremony, Samuel presented Saul to the people. Long live the king, Israel shouted. The new king got right to work. One of Israel's enemies, the Ammonites, invaded an Israelite city. Saul summoned the people. The men came, hundreds of thousands of them. They gathered as an army, surrounded the city, and slaughtered the enemy. Saul went out again with his army and slaughtered another invading force. The more victory Saul had, the prouder he became. Israel and Saul soon forgot that God was responsible for their victory. But then something changed. After yet another successful battle, Saul was supposed to wait for the priest Samuel to come so he could offer a sacrifice. Instead, he decided that he himself was worthy of sacrificing to God. This was a big mistake. Samuel showed up soon after and confronted him. You have sinned, Samuel told him. God's favor and blessing on Saul was about to change. Things got worse. Sure, Saul was enjoying great military success, but he was also disobeying God's commandments. As Saul came to one enemy city, preparing to conquer it, God told Saul and his army, destroy everything. But Saul disobeyed. Instead, he took the good stuff for himself. He didn't destroy it. He stole. God had to reject Saul as king of Israel. Later on, when God chose David to be Israel's next king, Saul's fury increased. He was jealous of David and called out his entire army to find David and kill him. Sadly, Saul's life came to an end during a battle with the Philistines. He was wounded by an arrow from the enemy. Rather than be killed by the enemy, he decided to end his own life. He fell upon his sword and died. What a tragic end for Israel's first king. They had wanted a king so badly. They thought they had him, tall, strong, handsome, and a great warrior. But he rejected God, so God rejected him as king. Okay, now that you've um, seen the video, let's see what you remember. Uh, we're going to answer some questions right now. Okay.
What did the people of Israel want? Who can tell me? If you said they wanted a king, you were absolutely right. Good job. What did God tell Samuel to do? Let's see. God told Samuel to warn the people about how a king would rule over them. And this is King Saul. Remember? What tribe was Saul a part of? Who remembers? Saul was from the tribe of Benjamin. Good job. What did King Saul do after a city in Israel was invaded by an enemy army? And invaded means they people came and they wanted to take over. They were fighting. He summoned the people and hundreds of thousands of men came. What did Saul do that Samuel said was a sin? And do you know what sin means? The word sin? That's when you do something that is not pleasing to God. So what do you think? Um, Saul did, that was a sin. Saul made a sacrifice to God on his own instead of waiting for the priest. So that was the sin. He didn't wait for the priest. He decided he was going to do things his own way. How did Saul disobey God? Saul disobeyed God when he kept some of the things from the city instead of destroying everything. And here's that word about being disobedient. Remember? We always need to obey, and especially we need to obey God and do what he would have us do. Who did God choose to be the next king of Israel? I bet you know this one. God chose David to be the next king. Very good. How did Saul die? He fell on his own sword. My, my. Memory verse, to obey is better than sacrifice. So always remember that. Sometimes we do things and we sacrifice, but to be obedient, to obey is the best thing. Okay? Good job, boys and girls. Wow, that was a good story about King Saul. Even though things did not go well for him in the end, there were a lot of good lessons to be learned from his life. I hope you were able to answer most of the questions. In the beginning of the story, all of the people wanted a king so that they could be just like the other countries. Do you think that was a good reason to have a king? Sometimes you will find that people want something just because others have it. That is called being envious. I'm sure that there are times when we all have seen someone with something and we wanted it, 
just because someone else had it. Then if we get what the other person has, we sometimes find out it wasn't all that we thought it would be. I'm sure you can think of a game that a friend of yours had and you said to yourself, I sure would like to have that. And you kept asking your mom for it. She finally bought it for you. And then once you got it, you barely played with it because it wasn't all that you thought it would be. So God does not want us to be envious of what other people have. He gives us the things we need and the desires of our hearts. And we need to be thankful. The Israelites learned this lesson when they got their king. Another lesson that was shown in this story was about obedience. Being obedient means to listen to what someone is telling you and do what they say or ask you to do. For example, let's say you asked your mom if you could go outside and play when you came home from school. She told you that you could, but you needed to clean your room first. So you said, okay. So when you got home, you went straight outside without cleaning your room. When your mom got home, she saw that you had not cleaned your room. She called you in. You apologized and promised to wash the dishes every night for a whole week. Your mom appreciated the sacrifice you were willing to make by washing the dishes every night, but that wasn't what she had asked you to do. You were supposed to do what she told you to do, and that was to clean your room before going out to play. Being obedient is better than sacrifices you make. Remember to listen to your parents and do what they ask you to do. Not only your parents, but your teachers and other adults. Above all else, be obedient to God and everything will work out fine. I hope you enjoyed our lesson. Now we will have our Black History Highlight followed by our closing song. Until next time, bye-bye. Hello and good day. My name is Malcolm Carey, and I'm a deacon at the uh, Mount Zion First African Baptist Church. I hope all is blessed and well. Today, I will be reading a bio, Black History, of James Welton Johnson. Just to give you a, just a small overview of James Welton Johnson, he was very active in the early stages of the NAACP, but he is most remembered for the writing of an African-American national anthem, Lift Every Voice and Sing. James Welton Johnson was born in Jacksonville, Florida on June 17, 1871. His mother was a school teacher, taught him music and other subjects. Johnson graduated from Atlanta University, now known as Clark Atlanta University in Atlanta, Georgia with a bachelor's degree in 1894 and a master's degree in 1904, he later studied at Columbia University in New York City. For several years, Johnson was principal of a black high school in Jacksonville. Johnson then studied law and was the first African-American to pass the written law examination for the Florida Bar in 1897. He also studied music and became a successful songwriter. He was a poet most known for God, Trombones, a book of American Negro poetry. He also wrote songs along with his brother. James Johnson, James Weldon Johnson poem, Lift Every Voice and Sing, set to music by his brother, later became something of an African-American national anthem. In the 1940s, also, in 1901, the two brothers went to New York City where they wrote songs, 200 songs rather, for the Broadway musical stage. In 1906, 
U.S. President Theodore Roosevelt appointed James Wilton Johnson U.S. Consul to Venezuela. Johnson served as U.S. Consul to Nicaragua from 1909 to 1914. The autobiography of an ex-colored man, his only novel and perhaps his best known literature work was published in 1912. Four years before he became field secretary of the NAACP, Johnson expanded the NAACP membership and coordinated its program, resigning finally to accept a professional ship at Fisk University. James Wilton Johnson died in 1938, leaving a legacy of excellence to this very day. I hope you all learned a little something about James Welton Johnson. Thank you.